The protests in Iran show no sign of abating. In fact, even more people seem to be raising their voices against the regime. And among the voices are members of Ayatollah Khamenei's own family. A few weeks ago, it was his niece, Faride Murad Khani, and now it's her mother, Badri Hosseini Khamenei, Khamenei's own sister. She wrote a letter condemning the regime. The letter was sent to her son, Mehmood Morad Khani. He made it public on Twitter. Let's now take a look at what she said. I think it is appropriate now to declare that I oppose my brother's actions and I express my sympathy with all mothers mourning the crimes of the Islamic Republic from the time of Khamenei to the current era of the despotic caliphate of Ali Khamenei. She then makes an appeal to Iran's revolutionary guards. Ali Khamenei's revolutionary guards and mercenaries should lay down their weapons as soon as possible and join the people before it is too late. We should mention that Badri Khamenei and her family have opposed the Ayatollah for quite many years. Badri Khamenei had fled to Iraq in the 1980s with her husband, dissident cleric Ali Tehrani. Her daughter, Faride Murad Khani, was jailed last month. She was jailed in the past too for defying the regime. Badri Khamenei's son, who posted the letter on Twitter, is based out of France. Clearly, this branch of the family isn't the closest to the Ayatollah, but their defiance may still be a cause of concern. Iran has been blaming foreign powers for inciting these protests. Israel, Saudi Arabia, and especially the United States have been in Iran's crosshairs. And this was what the Iranian president, Ibrahim Raisi, said to students on Wednesday. Listen in. The United States of America is the most despotic country and the greatest dictatorship in the world. The true voice of the Iranian university student is the anti-arrogance, anti-American voice. The audience cheered Raisi as he spoke, but students at other universities across the country were protesting. Iran has denied that 22-year-old Masa Amini died in custody and has refuted reports that she was killed in custody of the morality police for not wearing appropriate attire. Since the protests began, the regime has been shifting blame. It doesn't seem to be working. Masa Amini's death in September sparked protests. They were initially against Iran's mandatory hijab law, but have now become protests against the regime. And the regime has unleashed a brutal crackdown. The first execution related to the protests has taken place. Iranian media reported that a man named Mohsen Shekhari was hanged. His crime was in injuring a security guard with a knife and blocking a street in Tehran. Riots groups have said that Shekhari was tortured and forced to confess to his crime. On Tuesday, a judiciary spokesperson said that five people had been sentenced to death. They have been indicted for killing a member of the Bazaj militia. Amnesty International says Iran is seeking the death penalty for at least 21 people. Remember, this is separate from the people who have been killed while protesting. Human rights activists in Iran say that at least 475 people have been killed while protesting. More than 18,000 have been detained. The regime's brutal tactics may eventually crush the protests, but as we said, more people are finding their voices. As for now, the demonstrations continue. Now, for more on the latest updates that are unfolding in Iran, we have with us Mursal Nurzai from Munich. She's an activist. Mursal, thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. Now, we're seeing opposition from the Supreme Leader's own family. Will this deter the regime or will it further embolden it to continue its brutal crackdown? It's a very good thing that uh, from, um, from the from the recent policymaker, the families there, at least the female uh, member of the families are raising their voices. Um, in August, we you probably remember that uh, the um, Am uh, Amnesty International has noted uh, that brutal forces have been used uh, by Iranian security forces against the protesters, right? So this is, um, and, and exactly um, at times like this where people, um, you just mentioned uh, 400 plus people have been killed 
um, and also uh, uh, just by injuring a protester, uh, a, a protester is now being um, uh, killed or being punished uh, um, because he has injured one of the um, armed forces. Um, they, they, I think if this, if the if the current regime will not come to a peaceful conclusion, this will get more. This topic will get more heated. Um, this is not only a topic that has been seen or protested within Iran and with, uh, within the people of Iran, but um, the whole globe is looking at it uh, from a, dis a different perspective. Because um, if we look, um, if we look into Iran, Iran is not only going through um, through the um, the, the unfair um, uh, behavior towards the woman, but also they are going through an econo uh, economic crisis, lack of freedom of expression, of course, ignoring the human rights and the women, especially the women rights, right. uh, the brutal killing of people and the civil uh, civilians. So this protest is not anymore about um, the woman itself, but it's up now about the people of Iran. I know, that's an interesting um, point, of course, um, that this, this has become a people's movement, especially one that has seen a rare sign of dissent from the youth. But my question is, while yes. uh, the Supreme Leader's family may be slamming the tyranny of his rule, will it change anything on ground? It's happening at a time, on a day when we have reports of the first execution linked to the protests as well. And that, of course, is alarming. Um, that is very unfortunate, but I do not think so that um, uh, um, even though that this protest will be coming or is coming from uh, the ruling, uh, ruling family's member, I do not think that any sudden or any um, decision in favor of uh, civilians will be taken in any near future because we have to understand the culture and the complexity of, um, uh, of a country. Right? right. We have to um, we, we have to look. This is not we are not talking about um, Europe. We are not talking about US where things work differently. Um, we're talking about a complex um, way of um, policy makers, the way they think. Um, therefore, it's sometimes it's very important to separate the religious decisions from the uh, from the um, human rights. Um, because right, some but people actually get my question was about the execution um, uh, that just happened today. My question actually was that uh, will uh, the opposition that we are seeing from within the Ayatollah's family is happening at a time when there was a public execution, the first execution that's been linked sure. to the protests. So my question was, there are you yeah. hear about reports like this? Will it actually change anything on ground? Will this be for the protesters? This is almost like a warning. Well, this will encourage them for sure. This will encourage them that this, there won't be any, um, um, I don't think so, that there, there won't be any improvement from the policymaker side, that they will take a positive decision based on uh, the movement. But this will encourage the protesters um, at least in a positive way that they will say, okay, now we have at least moved someone within the uh, family of uh, policymakers. Right. So um, yes, uh, it has a positive uh, impact um, on the uh, civilians. Um, however, I still fear that there won't be um, any positive decisions for the civilians at this point of time. Right. Thank you so much for speaking to us on Beyond and thanks for joining us on the broadcast. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.